G'day everybody and welcome to another episode of Automotive Carnage. Today we have a very special episode. We have found a very special car and uh, when I first found this vehicle I was almost in tears. So let's just get the credits out of the way and uh, let's start talking about this beautiful, beautiful sedan that we have found. So as I've already alluded to, we have found a special car and I just want to say as a wreck hunter and as a car spotter, you know, you tend to find the same cars over and over again. So if you live in Sydney or Melbourne, you go to your cars and coffee, you can guarantee there's going to be a whole bunch of Toyota 86s, there's going to be a whole bunch of Holden Commodores, you know. For me, there's always a bunch of HQ to HX Holdens, there's always a bunch of XA to XC uh, Falcons and you're just kind of like, oh yeah, that's cool. Um, but you see them all the time and then you got that next level of vehicles and that might be for me anyway It might be an old CF Bedford where it's like wow, that's really cool You don't see it very often, you know small Japanese cars old Datsuns old Toyotas Most of those rusted out as soon as you drove them off the dealership floor back in the day And so it's really cool to find those sitting out here in the bush or maybe it might just be an XB Falcon That's got all of its interior all of its windows in fantastic condition so you kind of get those where you get excited about them. It's like, wow, that's really cool, you know? And then there's like a list of vehicles that are just like, pff, whatever, you'll never see them. If you're in the city, it might be a Koenigsegg. It might be a Blumen Bugatti. It might be something ex super exotic that, you know, if you saw it, you'd just flip your lid. And there's vehicles like that too for me out here in the bush. And when you come across one of these vehicles, it is... You, I just become speechless because you look at a vehicle and you just go how the hang did that car end up all the way out here in the bush it just doesn't make sense and that's why I try as hard as possible with any car that I find to get those backstories and find out who owns them to try figure out now today's vehicle is special I I, as I said, I am speechless. It is one of those vehicles where I just look at it and go, how? Who? Why? Why is this car even still here as a wreck? I, I don't know. So I'm going to try to do this car some justice. Let's do some awesome B-roll. Welcome to the Bushwreck Mazda RX-3. <music>
let's dive in for a closer look. I am going to try to describe this car as best as I can, but as I said before, I am completely speechless that we have found a genuine RX-3. No, this is not an 808 piston power. This is the real article RX-3 sedan. Like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So, um, the front nose, which I know is the most distinctive part of this vehicle, that has been pretty well squashed. But, I mean, it's an RX-3. These parts are getting so hard to find, so I'm sure someone could mangle that back into shape. Uh, into the engine bay, the 10A rotary has gone. Where it's gone, I don't know. I do see bits and pieces of engine lying around here. Um, so we'll go for a bit of a scout later, see if we can find something to do with this car. But anyway, for those of you who doubt me, there is the Park Mazda RX3 sedan built on the 8th of 73. This is the real deal, people. This is the real deal. I am so oh, amazed. Okay, anyway. The panels are dented in a little bit, but structural rust. I can't see much. I cannot see much. Let's check out these sills down here. Can you see that, guys? That looks and sounds very good. Up in here, again, all really nice and tidy. Can we open the door? Oh, almost. There we go. So the interior has been decimated. Um, Obviously, this has been sitting out here for quite some time. And someone's already taken the front seats. They must have been nice seats of some description. Uh, manual, whether it's a four or five speed, I don't know, sorry. And that's pretty well seized. The steering wheel's just over there, actually. It's on the ground. We'll go check that out later. Uh, cluster, all the instruments, um, uh, glove box, they're all gone. Again, I'm just getting lost for words here, guys. This is amazing. We still have the pedal boxes in there, bonnet release. Alternator, is that from this? Ford part number. Possibly not, that might be off something else, that thing. Right, we've got a little bit of center console, but it's all pretty well smashed. Roof's caved in, but nothing can't be popped out because rust, again, it's only surface rust, guys. I can't see corrosive structural rust. So that is the interior. That's, I mean, this, this shell, Besides the roof and the nose cone, oh, and we'll get to the back as well. Um, it doesn't, it's not gonna take much to get it into a good shape again. What about the arch in this one? Clean, clean again. A little bit of corrosive rust back here starting to form. And we've already got some punch through in the bottom quarter here, but that's nothing unusual. All right, that can be fixed, it can be fixed. That can all be popped out. Someone's taken them, most of the badges. But like, oh, all the chrome stripping is in really good condition. Someone smashed, oh, it's got, it's a Mazda. It's not a Mazda, it's a Mazda. <laughs> oh, a tiny little boot. And it's been stoved in the rear here as well, unfortunately. But the tail lights, see, I always thought that these were metal, but they're plastic. At least on this one, anyway. All right, what we've got in here, oh, we have a dead animal. That's lovely, let's just block that out. All right, and then we've got a bit of rust around the wheel well there. Down in there, you can see some daylight. See it down there? All right, fuel tank still here on this side. Ooh, can you see any daylight? No, nah, it looks pretty solid down that side. Rear bumper's been twisted up. Oh, we still have one Mazda RX-3 badge. Wow. I'm amazed that there's still badges and the grill and the tags, they're still here. This is just crazy, unbelievable. The entire diff assembly and rear suspension, that's in there. Drive shaft, oh, who knows if that's bent or not. I just, oh my gosh. Like, even if this was an 808, I would freak out. But no, it's an actual RX-3. Look, and all the chrome, all the trim pieces down the sill there. Wow, just wow. I wonder what animal made these prints. They're really interesting prints on the side of that car. But I just, I feel these panels can just be popped out. Checked for rust, obviously, because I can't see all of it. And um, and they're good to go. That side's good. Right down this wheel, arch. Yeah, that one looks all right as well, doesn't it, guys? Oh, there's a bit of rust up there. But my gosh. Now, 
I've only just found this car uh, two days ago, so I haven't done the research yet to find out um, anything about it. I just really, really wanted to film this and show you. Um, so we're gonna start doing some research and then hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be allowed to drag this car into town and uh, give it a new lease on life. Um, <laughs> it's an RX3. Honestly, when I first found this thing, I was almost in tears. I was that excited to find such an amazing car. And I've just seen some more rust down here in the A-pillar. All right, bit of corrosive in there, so these trims, bit of a dent in the trim there. Oh, like someone's bogged this one up. I've got along here. Yeah, that looks all right down the C-pillars there. Oh, man. This is crazy. All right. There's a few parts lying around on the ground, so let's suss them out. First off, we've got the steering wheel here. Ah, oh, look, someone's taking the inside emblem. But that's all right. Still a beautiful steering wheel. All right, over this way we have air cleaner, uh, fan shroud, um, not shroud, that is the actual fan. Sorry. Bonnet. All right, the bonnet's uh, toast. There's no restoring that, that's for sure. All right. Some interior pieces. <gasps> wow. Okay. So the gauges are gone, but there's the cluster surround. All right, over here. Now this is how I found it, man. Like, I didn't lay these parts all out over the ground. There's our glove box. Fantastic. So now we're missing the center section. I did see something else over this way. Sorry, I'm just looking behind me. Ah, there we are. There's our car over there. Go for a walk. Oh, I've just seen more parts as well. Okay, so what's this? Ah. Oh, look at that. Rotary engine. Oh my gosh. So, um, gear, shifter, surround. Still got the rotary engine in there. Whoa, baby. That's really cool. All right. Can you see it? Can you see that car over there? There's a whole nother car here. That looks like an old Holden. Stay tuned for another episode of Bushwick Hunting. All right, let's stay on track here. Let's stay on track. We'll go see that later on, but you'll see that in another episode. Because uh, right now we are hunting for a rotary engine. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, some parts over this way. What have we got over here? I don't understand why when they leave these cars out here, whoever leaves them, quite often they'll pull Pull them all apart. Some old wheels and rims. Is this part of our? Oh, that might be part of our center console. All right, what else we got here? Oh, look, there's not a manifold over here. Motorbike rims over there. It's another manifold, the same as the other. So is this, or is that two halves of a Holden Six manifold? You guys tell me. All right, all right. We've got an air cleaner over there. Uh, well, it's got some more motorbike parts here. Plenty of, wow, look at the size of this rim. Sway bar off something. Look at, look at the dish on that. That's like my whole fingers. <laughs> oh, I don't want to lift that. There's a big spider web in there. It looks like a funnel web. Uh, they just stuck my hands in there. Oh, oh, I see an engine block, people. What have we got here? These are good rims. Oh, that's a beautiful butterfly. Oh, look, there we go, there we go. Okay, anyway, we're not Steve Irwin, we're Car Hunter. All right, more rims. What have we got here? Motorbike parts, car batteries. It's a knuckle of some sort. A cluster, but not ours because we've already found our cluster surround. Okay, I saw a block over here. I think it was a piston block though. Uh, where was it? Over here. We're getting uh, a little bit sidetracked and away from our car. Here we go, a little four cylinder of some description. Yeah. I'm going off that might be an opal block. I'm not too sure though, sorry guys. What's that? Two. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is that an opal block or is that something else? Here's the head. Oh, here's the cover. Oh, it's a Ford Pinto block, isn't it? I'm sure of it. Let me know anyway. Um. Okay, but it's not a rotary. 
It is not a road. That might be what that Ford alternator was off that was in the car. All right, parts getting fit on the ground. I don't think we're going in the right direction here. So let's head back to the vehicle. It's over there. And we'll go check out the other side of the car. Okay, so we're on the other side of the vehicle now and we've found the missing part to our center console. So that must be the top part that goes between the glove box and the uh, clusters, um, along with the shifter surround down there would go underneath that. So I want to check on the other side of these trees here and see if there's any parts lying around. Um, I can't see any clues of parts. I can see another car though, there's another one. All right. All right, there's an episode there on that vehicle. Um, here we go, we're just going to this thick of trees over here. Let's see what we can find. But uh, it's not looking good. Uh, I don't think so, the parts aren't spread out to here. I can't see anything on the ground that is man-made. Hidden under the trees, no, 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 okay. So we might be out of luck on finding the actual 10A. Um, I mean, what, what an unusual engine. What, when you're out in the bush, what are you gonna take a 10A Rory out of? Leave the manual gearbox behind. What are you gonna put the drive line into? I mean, without that gearbox, that engine's not really gonna do anything, is it? Who wants a 10A Rory? Unless, of course, there was another wreck hunter like myself or parts hunter who knew the value of the engine at least. Oh, that wind's picked up. So yeah, we'll head back into town now. We'll start doing some research. It may take us a week. It may take us a few months. Um, but either way, we need to find a way to save this vehicle. Oh, this is just one of those holy grail vehicles that you'd never expect to find. And here it is. Mazda RX-3 10A Rotary. Can you tell I'm excited by this? I am so excited by this. Okay, we got to get out of here. So with that being said, thank you for coming along and as we'll do some research and we'll catch you guys on the next episode of Automotive Carnage.